Hello and welcome to another Fantasy Premier League video. My name is Steve and there was a bit of trolling in the comments last week with my wildcard not starting off too well. Now I guess haters are gonna hate but please keep those comments to yourselves. I'm trying to foster a channel where ideas can be openly discussed and that managers might find something a little bit different to contemplate. Now, constructive criticism is always welcomed, but blatant trolling will very quickly get you banned. Now, regardless of the keyboard warriors who feel the need to try and bring others down in order to promote themselves, I think that this game week starts to show the potential of what this wildcard could do over the coming weeks. Now, I said in my wildcard video that both Sun and Salah were far too good to drop on the wildcard, even though they were both off to AFCON and the Asia Cup. But in holding them through the wildcard, I'd be booking in two transfers for game week 21. Now, Sun came away with a five and a nine pointer, and Salah came away with three and 16, where crucially, I captained the 16 pointer this week. Unfortunately, Gusto lost his clean sheet in the 80th minute, conceding two goals in the closing stages of the game. Again, showing how hard it is to find clean sheets in periods of heavy fixture congestion. There were actually only two clean sheets this game week up until this morning's goalless draw. Sulla missed a penalty, contributing to a 7 point downswing to his 16 point haul without the captaincy so I could have been 14 points better off here had he sunk that first penalty. I served Kulisewski's one match suspension and was forced to play Semenyo who unfortunately copped a one pointer from his first benching in eight game weeks. Solanke blanked from his nine shots in the match, and I managed to leave Dubravka's penalty save and Botman's goal on the bench. And if it wasn't for Ariola's 11 pointer this morning, I would have actually quartered my rank. But unfortunately, the Hammers Keeper's monster haul wiped out 56k of my rank today just by himself, leaving me on the tiniest of green arrows. So even with all of this somewhat bad luck, we still managed a green arrow and could have been on a huge one had the game week's fixtures gone a little bit differently. Anyway, that's enough of a game week 20 review. This video is actually all about following through with my pre-planned move to sell both Salah and Sun, which I have actually already locked in. But before we get started, make sure to give this a thumbs up if you like the following content and subscribe to the channel. So, Sun and Salah were actually set to drop in value during the game week 20 gameplay so on monday new zealand time and i am actually recording on wednesday in new zealand both sun and Salah were trending down looking like they were both going to drop in value on tuesday so sun was at 9.9 .9 million and one drop of 0 0.1 million would have changed my sale price from 9.5 million down to 9.4 million. So I had no buffer on any price drops from Sun. Similarly, Seller was at 13.3 million and one drop of 0 0.1 million for him would change my sale price from 12.9 million to 12.8 million. So I actually had no buffer on him either. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you'll know that part of my plan for selling Salah and Sun 
is to gamble on their value and hope that I can buy both players back for the same price, price that I sell them for, or maybe even slightly cheaper by the time they both become available after their respective national tournaments. So in the wildcard video, I identified that in order to have the best chance at achieving this, I would actually have to sell both of these players at their max sell price. And that would likely mean that I would have to make very early transfers for game week 21. And that is part of holding Sun and Sulla through on the wild card and making this play was that it would come with this risk. So I have actually already locked both of these moves in. Now I did discuss on the wild card that Bowen was definitely coming in for me in game week 21 for either Sulla or Sun, but that the other spot was still up for grabs. Now annoyingly the West Ham game wasn't actually until this morning, Wednesday New Zealand time, and with Sulla needing to be sold on Monday, I actually needed to buy the other player that wasn't Bowen to try and de-risk buying an asset that still had not even played their game week 20 fixture yet. Now I am aware that the FA Cup fixtures are also yet to be played. So if you just have a look at my advanced schedule view on the fixture ticker, you'll see that game week 20, all the results are in. And there is an FA Cup round three match for all of the Premier League teams scheduled to start in, well, I think the first game kicks off in about two days time, but they will be played over the next two, three, four, five days. And so I am aware that in selling both Seller and Sun, they do still have basically a midweek fixture uh, before the next deadline, which is in two weeks time for the Premier League. But Bowen also had that game week 20 fixture, which was played this morning, still in front of him. So as soon as the Liverpool game concluded, I sold Salah to avoid the price drop, which actually did occur on the afternoon in which I sold him. So my original list of replacements that I discussed during the wildcard video was that I was looking to bring in either Odegaard, Foden, Madison, or Richarlison to bring them in alongside Bowen. <clears throat> now I ruled out Odegaard from contention as he hasn't actually been playing amazingly recently and Arsenal themselves haven't really been firing on all cylinders either and in fact Saka might even be on the chopping block for me in a few weeks. So I basically we ruled out Odegaard very quickly. We actually have no word yet as to what's going on with Madison. He was scheduled to be back in game week 21, but he has had zero minutes to date. So I've already, so it was easy to rule him out straight away as well. Now I didn't fancy investing in another Spurs attacker with both Saar and Son departing from the team and Madison still not back yet and even the firepower coming in off the bench is dwindling a little <clears throat> as Velas, who has been playing the last couple of game weeks off the bench also copped an injury in game week 20. Imposter Coglu is looking at a severely weakened team. Now in addition to that, maxing out on Spurs now would mean that I would be forced to sell a Spurs player in order to bring Madison in when he is fit and ready. And with how tight 
the funds are for my intended transfers over the coming weeks, which is to buy seller and son back as soon as they're available. Obviously also bring Haaland back into the team and find some way to squeeze Madison in alongside all of these players. I may actually need to sell either Sucker or Watkins in order to buy Madison. So Richarlison also didn't make the cut either. So I have indeed bought Foden into the squad. Now he had a great game against Sheffield United earning two assists and a bunch of bonus. How much bonus did he get? I think he maxed out. Yeah, he got all three bonus and a 12 pointer. Uh, he was looking quite involved in the build-up play and had a few shooting chances in that match. Now, the only small concern for me on investing into Foden is that KDB is waiting in the wings and I'm a little bit unsure on how he will be worked back into the team and at the cost of whose minutes. So if you aren't aware, uh, KDB has been back in full team training for the last couple of game weeks. And he was actually even on the bench for Man City unused. Was it game week 20 or game week 19, I think, was when he first made it back to the bench. Now there is every chance that it could be Foden or even Alvarez who loses out. But in the last game that KDB actually played in the City squad, which was way back in game week one against Burnley, he did actually play alongside both Foden and Alvarez in the starting lineup before he got injured. So I'm hoping that Pep will continue with the idea of playing KDB as a deeper lying playmaker with both Foden and Alvarez in the team alongside him and I'm also hoping that he doesn't fancy splitting up the strong relationship that both Foden and Alvarez have built up together throughout the season. Now Man City also have a double to schedule in against Brentford plus another team and the early indications are that it could come in and around game week 25. So I'll definitely want to be doubled or even tripled up on City by then. So buying into Foden now also seems like a bit of a smart play. Now Foden was actually due for a price rise on Monday uh, New Zealand time. So when I sold Seller uh, for Foden, I banked in the max sale price of Seller and immediately gained an extra 0 0.1 million in value or of value in Foden as he rose in price yesterday. And Foden is now already over 60% through another price rise. And with the upcoming fixtures of Newcastle away, Burnley at home, Brentford away and Everton at home, with a potential double, he will almost certainly gain quite a bit of investment over the coming days and weeks. Uh, and with the sales of both Sun and Sulla already in full flow, I'm betting that Foden will be one of those high up the list for managers who are looking to sell the pair that were off to AFCON and the Asia Cup. Now, Sun, at the time of recording, has already been sold by 704,000 managers, and Sulla has already been sold by 889,000 at the time of recording. And both players have already dropped by 0 0.1 million in value. And with Foden already up 0 0.1 million in value and set for another price rise in the coming day or so, 
with Bowen also set to get his first price rise in the next day or two, we're actually off to a pretty good start on the value gamble. Now, of course, I do need to dodge some injuries this game week. Anything could go wrong in the FA Cup matches that they all have to play. And of course, there is two weeks until uh, the next Premier League game. And so I guess people could get injured in training as well. But I do suspect that the FA Cup round three fixtures will probably see quite a lot of rotation from the Premier League teams as they are all coming out of a pretty heavy fixture congestion. And so I think the chances of me getting really unlucky with a couple of injuries is far reduced compared to normal circumstances. So the target prices for me to buy back Salah and Son is I sold Salah for 12.9 million so my target price for Salah is 12.9 million or cheaper and Son is sim I similarly sold Son for 9.5 million so I'm hoping that I can bo buy both assets back in a few game weeks time when they get knocked out of their respective tournaments for either the same sale price or hopefully even slightly cheaper. Now, in booking in these two transfers on the wild card and also leaving Haaland out of the squad and opting to go with Solanke, I also had a bit of a value play tied up in and around Solanke as well. But in making those moves, I did say that this would almost certainly invoke a hit in game week 21 in order to bring either Haaland back in game week 20 if he was going to be fit and available then that would have caused a hit in game week 21 or con but now considering Haaland didn't actually make it back onto the pitch in game week 20 if he is back fit and available uh, by the time that game week 21 kicks off in a couple of weeks if Haaland is going to be fit, I will be bringing him back in for a hit to go and take on Newcastle away. As we've just seen, Newcastle's midfield is a little bit shaky and is costing them quite a few goals at the moment. And so I think Man City coming up against Newcastle is just another prime fixture for someone like Haaland. And bringing him back in at the soonest time in which he is ready will mean that I will also buy, be able to buy him back at his cheaper 13.9 million price point where I sold him for 14 million a few weeks ago. So getting rid of these heavily owned assets and hoping to buy them back slightly cheaper does build up quite a lot of value into your team. Uh, which does, of course, make it easier to buy the best players in the game in the final, well, the second half of the season. So I did mention that Newcastle haven't been defensively sound of late, but most of this is actually through fatigue. And given that the City game isn't for another two weeks, we could see a much more rested and resolute Newcastle defence which is what I am expecting to see as this was part of my reasoning behind tripling up on them on the wildcard. City are City though, and they will absolutely dominate possession in the midfield, which is actually where all the issues are forming for Newcastle. So even an unfatigued Newcastle team will probably struggle against the overwhelming speed and pressure that City exert. This is all the reasons why I will be happy to take a hit for Haaland in the coming game weeks. Now, there are actually talks that Newcastle may be looking to buy Kelvin Phillips from Man City to help address the defensive coverage issue in the middle of the park as Bruno G pulls the attacking strings from the number six position. Now, with Bruno G being in the six and the one that is trying to create a little bit of the play, 
it actually means that both Longstaff and Joe Ellington, or Miley, who has been filling in in the midfield, are actually being caught too far forward and not and they're not actually defensively minded enough to cover Bruno G, which is how these devastating counter-attacks are just flowing straight through the Newcastle midfield. However, I do doubt that City would opt to strengthen Newcastle just before they play them in selling Kelvin Phillips to them before they play each other in a couple of weeks' time. But this is something to keep on the radar for the future Newcastle fixtures and their defensive prospects if they do address the midfield. Now, I think as soon as they are rested and less fatigued when Newcastle do come up against their easier opponents in a couple of game weeks' time, <clears throat> so after City and even Villa to a certain extent, they've got a great set of fixtures. Luton at home, Forest away, Bournemouth at home, tricky fixture against Arsenal away, and then basically just a sea of green from a defensive standpoint. But regardless of club transfers, though, I will be bringing Haaland back in as soon as he's going to be back on the grass and that will indeed be for a hit if it happens to be into ga in game week 21. Now the next deadline isn't for two weeks or so, so I won't actually be releasing any more content until we're, elite. we're a lot closer to the next set of fixtures. So happy new year to everyone. I will catch you in about a week or so. And remember to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Cheers.